Long before Billy Porter and Jared Leto wore beautiful dresses to gala events, the art of drag and cross-dressing goes back to Shakespearean stages. We'll follow drag through the timeline until today and hear Jose get quizzed on drag slang. Yes! Next on Technically a Conversation. Super friends, welcome to another episode of Technically a Conversation. Here, we like to share an interesting topic with each other, which we've recently learned, and hope you find it interesting too. I'm one half of your hosts, Isela. Joining me as always is the man with the great ideas, Jose. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good. How's your week so far? Good. Pretty much been taking it easy after a lot of editing and stuff and research, but so far so good. Cool. That's nice. What great idea did I have this time? I think just the chapstick. (laughs) Oh, to eliminate some of the mouth noise? (laughs) Yes, yes, absolutely. I was mentioning that my mom had her beauty queen dress made at the same place, La Popular, you know, whatever, how long that name is, that we had covered in uh, when we were talking with the ladies from Spooky Tales. And my mom had her dress custom made there when she was, I don't know, I think 18 or 19. She came out as like a beauty queen. And they made it. She's like, oh, yeah, I was telling her about it. And she was like, yeah, I was there. And yeah, I seen it. And it was weird. It was the coolest thing. (laughs) That's super cool. Yeah. And the full name is La Popular, La Casa de Pascualita Novias Quinceñeras y Accesorios. Wow. Yeah, that's (laughs) definitely the reason I don't remember anything else after La Popular. (laughs) Yeah. And if you all haven't heard us on their episode... You've got to go check it out. I think that was one of our best episodes. Oh my God, yes. So definitely go check it out on Spooky Tales. I want to say it's episode 96. Jose was like uh, doing his stand-up comedy hour. I love how we heard them reacting. It was so great. (laughs) Yeah, especially as I make you cringe a lot. So it was good to hear somebody laugh. (laughs) Uh, I stand corrected. Actually, it's episode 95 of Spooky Tales. Perfect. It was definitely a great time. Hopefully everybody gets to check it out. For sure. Well, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's shout out time. (laughs) Okay. Here's the list. The Loyal and the Royal. Queens. Erica and Elena. The Duke. Stephen B. ContraZoom Pod Podcast. Elba and Brex. (laughs) Thank you guys so, so much for sharing our posts. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. If I say these words to you, you better work, cover girl. Does that ring any old 1992 bells? <laughs> and yes, I think it's for makeup. Um, cover girl is a makeup brand. Absolutely correct. They're actually lyrics from a RuPaul song and it was called Supermodel. Oh, yes. And then in parentheses, it was like, you better work. It was a big hit. And RuPaul did put a huge spotlight on drag queens to the masses. So today, the topic is another listener suggestion from one of our royal queens, Erica. Thank you for your suggestion. It was really eye-opening reading and watching all about this. And that's exactly what we're going to chat all about, the history of drag. And we're going to take it all the way up through to today. More of a timeline of drag. Sound good? Cool. This is probably one of the few that you already knew about, so. Mm. Well, I mean, you knew that this was a topic that I was going to research. Yes, I do remember you saying that. All right, let's dive on in. Long before Jared Leto was rocking a beautiful red dress to the 2019 Met Gala, there was awesome David Bowie who blurred the lines of gender. And where this all was started was much further back. The first story of cross-dressing goes back to the 11th century. In Iceland. And hang on, like 11th century? Wasn't everyone just wearing robes or seashells over the boobies? Like, I don't, I don't know what the heck. How was there cross-dressing in the 11th century? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, did they even have makeup? Or did they make their own makeup with gunpowder and urine, like the uh, tattoo thing? Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> Let's definitely hope not. I don't know if I'm the only person that was picturing like Barney and Wilma Flintstone attire, but... <laughs> 
Anyway, <laughs> that's totally where I went the first time. Let's learn about the first cross-dressing story. Going back to Norse mythology, a couple of guys named Thor and Loki. Perhaps they sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> the quick and dirty of these two friends is Thor woke up one day to his hammer missing because Thrymer, hopefully I said that right, the giant had stolen it. Thrymer negotiated the return of the hammer, but only if he could take on a wife. Not just any old druka. He wanted, or demanded rather, Freja, and she was the Norse goddess of love, sexuality, beauty, fertility, gold, here's where it takes a turn, and also the goddess of war and death. <laughs> so she was basically everything. <laughs> she was well-rounded, in other words. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, sexual, and kind of spicy. I don't know. Kind of sounds like a Mexican. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thor and Loki go over to the goddess and they said, hey, you really have to marry this guy so we can get my hammer back. <laughs> she basically looked at them puzzled and said, no way. And she rode off in her chariot. Thor wanted his hammer back. No, nay, he demanded his hammer back. So they decided to dress up like a couple of women to try to trick Thrymer. Thor dressed up as Freyja. And Loki as one of her trusty handmaids. And that's the very first oldest cross-dressing story. <laughs> Jane Foster was nowhere around. Who's that? Jane Foster. I guess not. They didn't make it into Norse mythology. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. Back in the day, there was a TV show, Bosom Buddies. Do you remember that show? I do not. Oh, darn. Okay. So I want to say it was Tom Hanks and some other guy. I feel bad that I don't remember. But it was basically like a, a couple of friends and they were always cross-dressing on the show. Very fun, very silly, like shenanigans were always going on. So I was hoping you remembered, but something to look up. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. I'll add that to my list immediately. Yeah, I'm sure you're <laughs> dying to see that. <laughs> this old 80s show. Cross-dressing Tom Hanks? What's there not to want to see? Of course, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. There are a few others in history that dressed up as the opposite gender, just out of necessity, though. Think of like Joan of Arc. But today's chat's actually going to focus more on doing it with or doing it more for entertainment. According to a book, Drag, Combing Through Big Wigs of Show Business, the author Frank DeCaro explains this started as an entertainment back in ancient Greece when men were playing female roles. Fast forward a little bit to the 1600s during the times of Shakespeare, things were no different. In fact, Shakespeare wrote in cross-dressed characters in a lot of his famous plays like As You Like It, Twelfth Night, The Taming of the Shrew, just to name a few. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> Which means there were men acting like women who are cross-dressing as men. <laughs> so like basically, it would be like you as a woman, but pretending to be a man. <laughs> that part I didn't know because I know that uh, women weren't allowed to be actors during that time. Yes, that was exactly my next point. Perfect. Perfect segue. So fun fact, in these times, women were considered inferior, shocker. <laughs> so they were not allowed to be actors. Therefore, men had to cross-dress as the women characters. Here's the listen-up moment. Their dresses would often drag on the stage, and hence the word drag was born. What? That's so cool. They needed bigger heels. They needed bigger heels. They probably just didn't know how to cut it right, because, you know, this is their first time wearing dresses, I would assume. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're probably right. We're both probably right. <laughs> <laughs> also around the 1600s, if we shift over from England to Japan, kabuki is also getting underway. Kabuki is a traditional performance art, and it's written in kanji characters, the word kabuki. And ka, buki, breaks down as ka meaning sing, bu represents dance, and ki is skill. Therefore, kabuki really means the skill of art and dance. I thought that was a pretty cool little fun fact, too. <laughs> Today, all of the actors are males in kabuki, but oddly enough, this art was created by women. Shortly after 1629, women were banned from the theater, thus leaving men to play both the male and the female characters. 
kabuki is derived from kabuku, which is to behave oddly. Ba, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing about kabuki is people were drawn to kabuki because the shows were bold, they were eccentric, a little lewd, and the audience was rowdy. When I think about that, the adjectives really sound like a drag show of today. Yeah, definitely looks like some of the stuff that Erica posts on her um, on her Instagram. Yes, it seems so fun. And they're always big wigs and big hair and, oh my God, amazing makeup. It's definitely, you can see why now an audience would get very rowdy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of modern drag shows, let's get into the American drag movement now that we've covered a little bit of the history. According to an NPR article, I love the title, by the way, it's called How Drag Queens Sashayed Their Way Through History. <laughs> the modern drag movement can be traced back to Julian Eltinge in 1911, an American vaudeville actor and singer. He fought against homosexual panic, showing audience drag isn't trickery. There's nothing to fear, just men dressing in drag and performing. Today's drag queens are also a little closer linked to the queer community although it's important to note that not all of the drag queens are gay. In the 1950s and 60s, drag performers would go on world tours, and unfortunately, they had to do it kind of on the sneak because it was still illegal to dress as the opposite sex. As drag performers became closer tied to the LGBTQ plus movement, performances had to be in underground clubs, and police would raid the clubs they would arrest the performers, and it was usually accompanied with a lot of police brutality. In 1969, drag queens organized a series of riots known as the Stonewall Riots to protest police raids, but ended up being a big turning point for the first organized fight for gay rights. Then, things took a step in the right direction. In 1970, Flip Wilson became the first African American to host a successful TV variety show. Flip Wilson was the drag queen name, and he was hosting a show in the whole garb. It was really cool. In the 70s and the 80s, who was thriving musically? Let me give you a hint. You tell me if you remember. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. I was going to guess Boy George, but I don't think I've ever heard that song. The title is called Let's Dance, <laughs> and it's by David Bowie. Oh, okay. R.I.P. Yes. Yeah, I was more into his Ziggy Stardust phase. Oh, yeah, see, he had like the cool, even that lightning bolt across his face was so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Another one thriving around uh, the 70s and the 80s. Here's your hint, Rocket Man. Yeah, Elton John, of course. Yeah, there you go. Although you you didn't sing it, though. Oh, I don't, I shouldn't sing, is what I should say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, they also blurred the lines, really challenging gender definitions with clothes and makeup. And then in the 80s, I was exactly going to sing a karma, 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 chameleon. So there you go. There's your boy, George. <laughs> boy, George, I do remember. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, also in the 80s, the drag culture gave us this wonderful gem. And I did not know, this is me admitting my ignorance here. I didn't know that it went back this far. I thought it maybe went back to this recent decade. But these two phrases... Yes, or yes, queen. Like when people would get very enthusiastic about that. That came out of the 80s. I was going to say, imagine that being from Rocky Horror Picture Show, but I've also never watched it, so. Oh, you never saw that? No. Oh, it's actually a really fun movie. Anyway, <laughs> you should. <laughs> so I think they have it for free sometimes at the Plaza Classic Film Festival, just BT dubs. I'll add it on my list right next to the uh, Tom Hanks TV show. <laughs> <laughs> also in the 80s we had this lead singer wearing lipstick and singing we're not gonna take it do you remember them yeah twisted sister yeah exactly um and then also the cure robert smith had that trademark red lipstick do you remember uh the cure at all i do okay there you go nice see i think the only person you or the only song you didn't know was david bowie's song Actually, we'll listen to it after this recording because it's a really good song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although they did wear lipstick and perhaps tiptoe back and forth between the gender lines in that regard, I have to admit that I feel a little bit wrong, including the Twisted Sister frontman and Robert Smith. And let me explain why. 
Hear me out. <laughs> Drag queens have some kind of magical makeup blending brush because their makeup is like always on point. Their eyebrows are wonderfully defined. The eyeshadow was blended so well, I don't even know where it starts. And then if you recall, Robert Smith's lipstick looks like when he put it on, he had like a mini stroke when he was putting it on. <laughs> but yet Boy George, you know, he had a lot more evidence of skill. So my question is, what do you think about lumping in Robert Smith and Twisted Sister here? I think they were going more for shock than they were going for actual drag. Hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Well, it's also the 80s was a really weird time for fashion, especially if you were in music. I mean, most of the metal bands looked like uh, like they were in drag at that time because they were doing the whole glam thing. So, Well, even some of the non-metal bands like the regular rock. I remember thinking, um, was it Poison? Poison kind of had like, they were kind of pretty boys. They kind of had, had a lot of hair and it was like very well coiffed, I thought. Yeah. A lot of hairspray. I don't know. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> In the early 90s, RuPaul had his hit song that we were mentioning at the top of the um, podcast. Very catchy. This opened so many doors for him personally because it led him to a very successful show, RuPaul's Drag Race, which started in 2009, and it's still going on today. Can you believe that? I was not aware of that. Yeah, still going on today. He was really instrumental for bringing in this entertainment art of drag, really pulling it out of the shadows of clubs and really putting it into living rooms everywhere. Now that we've come to modern day, this is a good time to take a break. But when we return, get ready, Jose. I'm going to give you a quiz on drag slang. Yes. All right. I got my buzzer and bell ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are local lore, legends, and laughter your thing? Then come check out our podcast, or so they say, where two sisters travel small town America, one ghostly tale at a time. We're your hosts, Midwest twins Megan and Kelsey. Join us every Thursday where you get to hear not just the history behind haunted locations, but our own personal experiences as well. Faceless nuns? Check. Harmonica playing ghost? Check. Tangents that have nothing to do with spooky things whatsoever? You have no idea. So join our spooky crew and follow along as we investigate a haunted place near you. Listen to, or so they say, wherever you stream your favorite podcasts. Come check us out. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, if that trailer with faceless nuns doesn't grab you, I don't think anything will. <laughs> All right, so I got this video, or I got this information, rather, from a video from Allure magazine. Bob, the drag queen, was teaching us a little, in his words, a little bit of the queen's English. <laughs> Here's the first question. False. Oh, hey, you got it right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be weird, right? <laughs> bar queen. Is this, uh, or do you know what bar queen means? Uh, drag queen that uh, works in bars? I don't know. Hey, actually, no, you're right. This is good. Very nice. Excellent. All right. I'll give you some multiple choice here. No tea, no shade. We're going to multiple choice it then. Would this be like, oh my God, it's too hot out here. We have nothing to drink. You know, nowhere to seek shade. Or would this be the equivalent of like real talk? Real talk. Yeah. Very nice. I think you moonlight as a drag queen. Is that right? <laughs> Damn, I told you not to say that on the podcast, Isela. Right. Damn it. <laughs> I told you in confidence. No, I know the phrase, uh, spill the tea, so. Yes, that's perfect. Clock, would this be when you time someone or when you identify something that they're trying to hide? When you identify something they're trying to hide. Yes, very nice. Yes, queen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hog body. This comes from... RuPaul's Drag Race Season 6, by the way. I know you didn't watch. It's on my DVR, though. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> so is this when um, you're wearing a corset or not wearing a corset or when you're eating a load of bacon? When you're not wearing a corset. Yes! <laughs> Five is a phrase. 
giving me life. Is this in reference to air and water, or anything invigorating you? Or is this a reference to, oh, actually, no, I don't even have, I didn't multiple choice that one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so there you go. That's what it is. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Sorry, I was trying to find the buzzer to give you the buzzer. <laughs> Not to give me the buzzer? <laughs> so kind, so kind. But yes, giving me life is basically in reference to something that is invigorating you. Like that new Ariana Grande song is giving me life. Like anything. It could really be anything. Oh, wait, I did multiple choice it. I just read it wrong. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you already know the answer. <laughs> Two for the one. Thank you for that. (laughs) Number six, serving face. Now, is this someone that's posing or someone that's serving up cake? Like a different word for cake. Somebody that's posing. Yes, or like posing with their face. They're doing things. They're serving you face. Very nice. Here's an easy one. Glamazon. What is a glamazon? This might be too easy. A big drag queen, like somebody that's really tall. Yeah, a, a very big person that's very glamorous as well. Yes. And very muscular. I don't think that's part of it, but sure, if that's a, if that's one of the drag queens, sure. There was a, a wrestler who used to go by the name The Glamazon, but I just don't remember who that wrestler was anymore. Oh, that's so cool. How fun. It was a woman, though. It wasn't a guy. Oh, that's still a fun, that's a fun name. Hopefully, she was very glamorous and had a lot of makeup still. I just remember the nickname. I don't remember the person anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, body, yaddy, yaddy. Would this be an odd body or a banging body? A banging body. Yes. <laughs> the cool thing about this one is you can use it if someone is extremely anything. So extremely buff, like The Rock. Oh, The Rock, he's got a body, yaddy, yaddy. Or Jessica from Roger Rabbit, she's got a body, yaddy, yaddy. So it could be very, very shapely or, you know, that kind of thing. Anything in extremes, basically. I'll add it to my lexicon to use it in the most inappropriate time. Yes. Oh, my God. Body, yaddy, yaddy. Yes. And then you're going to be objectifying people. This is wonderful. It's a twofer. <laughs> Boots. Would this be what the like what the kids say on God? Or is this like saying country? That's boots. What were the choices again? Um, so boots, would this be like when the kids say on God? Or is this another way of saying country? On God? Very nice. Yes. <laughs> there is a 9B to this one. A little subsect of boots is house down boots. And this is basically to say like, oh, that show was house down boots. Like a whole other level, another superlative level of like amazing or incredible or whatever. It was amazing. And the other person could say boots can also be like word or on God, as the kids say, as the people in our demo, not in our demographic level, <laughs> not in our demographic say. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. Oh, yeah, they do. Well, you know, I have a daughter. Yeah, I was gonna say, I also don't usually hang around with kids. So <laughs> yes, that could be a good thing. You're right. <laughs> and this one's a freebie because you already know. Escándalo. Scandal. Yes, exactly. It's Spanish for scandal. But how fun would this be, right? This is like a fun word. <gasps> Give me the scandalo. Or oh my god, that was too much escándalo. <laughs> my cousin saw my aunt kissing her not husband. What? I'm just kidding. I don't know if that's why you played that. <laughs> No, that music would have been appropriate for that, but I actually have that one listed as a scandalo for whenever we come up with something scandalous. That's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) And I think that is more, it sounds more like suspenseful music. (gasps) Although I can see that as a scandal. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. When I heard it, I was like, "Mm, this sounds scandalous, so I'll label it a scandalo. (laughs) I like it. The last one. Do you know what a meaty tuck is? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's what the ladies call me here comes old meaty tuck <laughs> <laughs> i know i was like i'm not even going to give a multiple choice on this one because his own answers are going to be funnier than whatever the, the fuck i come up with <laughs> i imagine that's when you do the um fuck i don't know what the proper terminology is or the tuck yeah there you go yeah yes so it is when a drag queen takes his penis and tucks it behind, 
you know, in between his legs, giving the illusion of not having a penis. But a meaty tuck is when this is not executed in the best manner. And like Arby's, he's got the meats, basically. <laughs> yeah. Or to quote Ace Ventura, looks like they have uh, very bad hemorrhoids. Oh my God, I don't remember that. <laughs> That's funny. Marilyn Manson had a cover of his 1998 Mechanical Animals of him doing a meaty tuck, in case you want a visual. Anybody out there? Put that right on the list, I'll say. <laughs> that I think I'll pass on. Okay. But thank you, though. Yes, yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> on that high note, we've come to the fun conclusion of our learning lesson. Have you heard of any of the phrases? I think just the one about the tea was the only one I've heard. Mm, no shade, no tea. Not the no shade part, but the tea part I have heard. Oh, okay. Yeah, no shade, no tea is like, I don't want to be mean or anything, but, you know, whatever type of thing. Yeah, and I've heard that because um, I used to listen to the Scam Goddess, Lacey Mosley podcast before, and she would always say that. So I like that phrase and I incorporated it as part of my lexicon. Very nice. Do you think you're going to use any of the other phrases? Maybe, um, I don't know when you're going to use meaty tuck, but are you going to, you probably can throw in escándalo, <laughs> body, yadi, yadi. <laughs> Uh, probably not. I don't think I'll ever use those. Oh, that's going to make me sound. I'm Although if kidding. I do wear uh, very tight pants and I have to do the meaty tuck to look more sheer, I mean, what can I say? Yeah. Guys got to do what a guy's got to do. <laughs> <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> I'd like to close with some parting thoughts. The videos I watched of drag queens were really fun. These queens are electric. They have huge personalities. I remember back in high school, I did watch a couple of drag queen shows um, downtown and they were daring. They were funny. I mean, you could tell these people had a really good time and they owned the fantasy of being who they were in these dresses. And you could see how happy like the dresses and the makeup made it. And seeing that really like made their joy like almost infectious. Everybody just had a blast. Um, so I'll sum it up with the words of a producer from RuPaul's Drag Race. Quote, it's very much a big, bold, brave statement of individuality. And this means now we get into to our review. We got a five star review. Brenda L. said the episodes are short enough and the mixture of history, paranormal, informative information makes it so easy to follow and understand. Hosts are hilarious, but yet serious. Five stars. Yay! Thank you so much, Brenda. That really means a lot because this is 100% what I'm personally aiming to do, sharing knowledge, but delivering it in a fun way, almost like a clown that moonlights as a librarian <laughs> or maybe backwards. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a clown that moonlights as a drag queen. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, not, that's not my aim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, thank you very much, Brenda. Those are very kind words, and it is something that we do strive for, to be fun and educational at the same time. Hopefully you're taking a bow, Brenda. <laughs> that makes you our super friend of the week. We also got an email from Roy. Thank you for that great correction regarding Carl Tantler. Um, that particular episode we had mentioned a few times that a radiologist is not a doctor. And he did confirm, in fact, they are doctors. Good to know. Thank you so much for writing in. Thank you, Rye. Yeah. Any other notes before we wrap it up, sir? Nope. Um, no, I'm not even going to say it. I was going to say something really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, no, can you ready to wrap up that meaty talk right now? <laughs> the meaty... <laughs> Well, congratulations, lovelies. <laughs> You've done it again, folks. You've learned along with us all about the art of drag and how its ties go back to when one would say, parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> we hope you've been entertained by our chat and invite you to join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show, please leave us a review, tell a friend, and subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Follow us on all the socials at Greetings TAC. Email us at greetingstac at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 915-317-6669 if you have a story to share with us or if you just want to say hello. There was also David... 
I want to call them blowy. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) 